Mr. Are you Nicholas Jacob Cruz? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Suspected sir. Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz appeared in court Thursday, charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder in the second deadliest shooting at a public school in U.S. history. These terrifying moments captured by a student in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School as gunshots rang out Wednesday. Officials say Cruz, a former student expelled from the high school, was armed with an AR-15 style rifle and had multiple ammunition magazines when he surrendered to officers in a nearby residential area. Now authorities are probing for a motive and finding a dark past for the 19-year-old. Rotus correspondent Zach Fagason is in Parkland. Most recently, Reuters has been able to confirm that Cruz took part in some way, with some activity, with a white nationalist militia, Clearwater Republic of Florida. The group's leader spoke with Reuters by phone earlier today and, and, and confirmed that he had been involved in some way with one of the group's cells in the state. The FBI is also investigating some comments that Cruz may have posted on the social media website, YouTube, expressing some interest in becoming a school shooter. However, Special Agent Rob Lasky, the agent in charge of the FBI's field office down here, said the agency has done some database searches but could not yet confirm whether or not Cruz was actually the one who made those posts. They also don't know what specific time they were made or what computer they actually came from. A federal law enforcement official told Reuters the FBI is now conducting an extensive review of how it handled that tip to see if mistakes were made. Cruz's attorneys spoke Thursday and described the accused killer as a, quote, broken child. Cruz's mother died last year and his father passed away years earlier. But he does have significant mental illness. Um, we're going to explore uh, the possibility of autism that we've been hearing about. Bruce is a um, that affects the behavior that you exhibit. That's the child that I'm sitting across from. This is a, He's sad. He's mournful. He's remorseful. Um, he is fully aware of what is going on. And he's just a broken human being. Does he ask for any messages to be given to the community? I really can't um, disclose any conversations that I've had with him. So he hasn't said, please let me. I, I can't disclose those you, conversations. You said that he's a broken, troubled child, but he's a, also accused of killing 17 he other children is. and teachers. And I have a tremendous amount of compassion for every one of those children that are lost for their families that they're grieving today and for what they have to go through for the rest of their life. Sitting across from my client doesn't mean that we don't care about the people of this community, the people of this state, and the people of this country. You know, I had to have the exact same conversation that every parent in Broward County had to have with their children this morning. And then I had to walk and meet with him. I'm fully aware of the impact that this has on the people that live here. And this is a national conversation. And unfortunately, it's not the first national conversation that we're having. But that's a conversation we need to have later. We need to let these families mourn the loss of their children, of their brothers and their sisters. And these communities can heal and these schools can heal. And we can collectively make our children feel safe in school again. Um, and I don't really have anything else I need to say. I think we're good, Gordon. While discussing the case. <laughs> now the shocked community of Parkland, Florida is just the latest flashpoint in a political and cultural clash on how to respond to America's gun violence epidemic. <laughs> Nicholas Cruz was in my class last year. He was in my first period reading class. He was in my group project. We legit communicated. And I just, I never judge anyone. So I wouldn't think that you would come and shoot at the school. Just for justice. I want my team to know that I won't stop until your body is made in bed. Bias, you're a hero. You're an American hero. You literally risked your life
They got guns out. Oh! Are you no, 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 yeah, no, no, you see, no, it's, no. oh, there's mad cops at the damn school. Snipers? What the Gang These ones. Suspect's been charged with 17 counts of premeditated murder, and uh, law enforcement will do everything we can, the FBI, ourselves, to make sure that this person is convicted of all charges and that justice is served. In 2017, the FBI received information about a comment made on a YouTube channel. The com comment simply said, I'm going to be a professional school shooter. No other information was included with that comment, which would indicate a time, location, or the true identity of the person who made the comment. The FBI conducted database reviews, checks, but was, un was unable to further identify the person who actually made the comment. Students have been reaching out to me, uh, reaching out to um, staff, probably board members and others, um, saying that now, now is the time for this country to have a real conversation on sensible gun control laws in this country. So our students are asking for that conversation. And I hope we can get it done in this generation, but if we don't, they will. And I want to acknowledge some heroes that have been in our schools. We had um, an athletic director, campus monitor, who responded immediately when there were signs of trouble in the school. Unfortunately, those two heroes gave their lives for our kids and probably helped prevent this from being a worse tragedy than it is today. And so we need to acknowledge the heroes that are in our school every single day, our teachers, our educators, who are not only ensuring that our kids are learning and developing the skills they need to have a bright future, but they love them and treat them as if they're their own children, and they put their lives on the line every single day. But the violence has to stop. We cannot lose another child in this country to violence in a school. The, there's many families grieving right now. We've got to grieve with them, mourn with them, but give them their space. What I'm asking our lawmakers to do is go back to places like Tallahassee, places like Washington, D.C., and give police the power if they see something on social media, if they see graphic pictures of rifles and blood and gore and guns and bombs, if they see something, horrific language, if they see a person talking about, I want to grow up to be a serial killer, we need to have the power to take that person and bring them before mental health professionals at that particular time, involuntarily, and have them examined. People are going to be rightfully so concerned about their rights, as am I. But what about the rights of these students? What about the rights of young kids who go to schools with book bags and pencils? Don't they have the right to be protected by the United States government to the best of our ability? And that's what we'll be doing. Teacher and child who is hurting so badly. We are here for you, whatever you need, whatever we can do to ease your pain. We are all joined together as one American family. And your suffering is our burden also. No child, no teacher should ever be in danger in an American school. No parent should ever have to fear for their sons and daughters when they kiss them goodbye in the morning. Each person who was stolen from us yesterday had a full life ahead of them, a life filled with wondrous beauty and unlimited potential and promise. Each one had dreams to pursue, love to give, and talents to share with the world. And each one had a family to whom they meant everything in the world. Today we mourn for all of those who lost their lives. We comfort the grieving 
and the wounded. And we heard for the entire community of Parkland, Florida, that is now in shock and pain and searching for answers. To law enforcement, first responders, and teachers who responded so bravely in the face of danger, we thank you for your courage. Police say the picture that's emerging of the suspect is of a troubled teenager who had a preoccupation with guns. Both of his parents had died. He'd been kicked out of the high school last year and then Wednesday came to school with a semi-automatic weapon. This morning, 19-year-old Nicholas Cruz meticulously planned the attack on his former high school. He had uh, countless magazines, uh, multiple magazines, and at this point, we believe he had one AR-15 rifle. I don't know if he had a second weapon right now. His intention, authorities say, to cause chaos and kill as many people as possible. He wore a gas mask and smoke grenades. He set off the fire alarm so the kids would come out into the hallways. Investigators say Cruz had been expelled from the same school last year for behavioral issues, including threatening other students. According to the Miami Herald, Cruz's Instagram page underscored his love of weapons and contained images. Images of crews wielding knives and showing off a gun. This morning, BuzzFeed is reporting the FBI was warned last year about the YouTube post from a user named Nicholas Cruz who wrote, I'm going to be a professional school shooter. According to BuzzFeed, agents with the Bureau's Mississippi field office spoke with the person who alerted them back in September and asked to follow up once again after yesterday's shooting. Fellow students say Cruz was a socially awkward kid who had a preoccupation with guns. I was in the book vocational school, the alternative school, he went ahead and showed me all his layout of guns and said that how he used to just shoot him around for fun. He's just always been a really crazy kid. Like, and I, I heard him, I heard some people say that one day he would have done this, and unfortunately I think that was today. Since his mother died in November, Cruz has been staying with the family of a friend. A lawyer for the family says this all came as a shock. He was a very mild-mannered kid. Uh, he's going through some tough times with losing his mom. The question for investigators, was anyone aware of what he was planning? Veteran FBI agents and police chiefs say the M.O. is all too common. Oftentimes in these incidents that you have a disenfranchised young man that uh, who is really uh, outside of the norm in the sense as a, as a result of bullying, is it antisocial behavior, is it a romantic issue, is it uh, just to uh, make a name for himself, there's multiple motivations. This morning, yet another mass murder at an American school, yet another heavily armed, angry young man determined to kill. This is the 18th school shooting this year alone. Since the Sandy Hook massacre in 2012, when 26 were killed, there have been 273 more school shootings. FBI profilers say there are signs of danger to look for among a potential shooter. Somebody who is brooding, depressed, disenfranchised from other students, making remarks about others online, may be drawn to firearms and previous mass murders, and almost always, say investigators, there are warning signs on social media if anybody is paying attention. Savannah, hold it back to you. It was a horrific scene. And, and you know, Douglas, like I said, I've been at Douglas for 18 years. It's such a fabulous school. We're, we're positive, we're, we're passionate, and we're proud to be Eagles. That's our motto. And um, we have such fabulous kids, you know, kids that are there to learn, to, to educate themselves. We have such talented students. We have, you know, a, 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 an award-winning band. We have, you know, kids that win National Science Awards. We have kids that go on to Ivy League schools. I mean, Douglas is a wonderful school and for these kids who were there to the, at the last half hour of school to get an education and for this to happen it's just it's just so unfair and, and, and it's just so wrong and I and we need to do something. Well, the president, we need to do something the as a society. The president said Isabella we are here for you whatever you need whatever we can do to ease your pain. What do you think of the president's comments? I mean 
mean, I really don't think that there is anything he could do. He said that there, if something's happening, go to your teacher. What could our teachers do in that situation rather than save themselves just as we were? I feel like he really needs to take into consideration all this gun control. There's no reason that a kid um, 19 years old that's been investigated already and not even a year ago being able to purchase a AR-15 in our in Broward County right here. And he just only he only got expelled. They didn't even like put him into a, a hospital with nothing for like a mental health, nothing. Like something needs to be taken care of. There's, I don't know. Alicia, you taught this man. <laughs> yes, uh, I did. Nicholas Cruz, probably about four years ago. So he would have been. He was a sophomore. 10th grade, probably. Yes. Uh, what do you know of him? I remember him being a, a, a very quiet student. He has um, a Hispanic background. I remember that he uh, didn't really like to speak Spanish too much. I, I think there was some uh, pride issue there. He, he didn't feel comfortable in his own skin, in his own culture. Um, he was very quiet. He sometimes turned in assignments, sometimes not. I tried to, you know break him a little bit and try to get into him a little bit and ask him questions and hey what's going on with you i believe he was in jrotc at the time right. so sometimes he would um he would come in in uniform and i communicated a couple of times with the jrotc professor and said you know hey what's going on with this kid i know you know that the the, the members of jrotc are usually you know they're very disciplined students mm -hmm. And so him so being in jail, exactly, it was not, exactly, very, very out of character. And, uh, I, you know, I remember him physically, you know, he, you know, I, you know, small in stature, you know, uh, a nice looking kid, uh, but very him? quiet. Did you know him? I used to see him around school all the time. He was just a really strange kid. Actually, they wouldn't let him bring a backpack to school. They, he had to either bring a paper bag, um, like a, a Ziploc bag. And I'd always see him. He'd always wear like bandanas all around his face. He'd, ha he'd carry a folder and he'd just walk in the weirdest way. He'd stare at you. I actually got, like last year, I got in an argument with him when we bumped into each other and he like pushed me and I was like, what are you doing? And he just like, well, he storms off. He's a really strange kid. I, used to, I always used to say like, wow, 